Live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. New traffic crossings in Hobart are causing a stir with one alderman labelling them the cause of a business downturn. The crossings installed two months ago will be debated at tomorrow night's council meeting. They're the controversial crossings that some say have Hobartians a little scrambled. Two months ago, trial scramble crossings were installed in Hobart's CBD. They allow pedestrians to cross in all directions at one time. Alderman Louise Bloomfield says businesses are telling her they're the cause of low turnover and slower traffic. People are in a car waiting to get to the next place. They're not spending, they're not engaging, they're not doing stuff that they would need to be doing in the city. Those on foot in the city this morning weren't as phased by the crossings or the traffic impacts. No, nope, they'll get where they need to go eventually. <laughs> Don't phase me too much. Most of the time I'm driving everywhere anyways. Oh, I think it's a good idea. No, no, I've found it relatively easy. The purpose of a trial is really to test things out and adjustments can always be made, but we know from the crossings all around the country that they are safer. Hobart City Council will tomorrow debate a motion calling for the traffic flow data to assess whether there has been a negative impact of the crossings. If the antidotal evidence proves correct, even a portion of it correct, we need to be acting now because a CBD is nothing without small business. The findings of the trial are due in December. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. There's positive news on the way for Bridgewater residents with a new provider for the Greenpoint GP clinic to be announced in coming weeks. Residents have rallied hard to save the clinic in the last month after operator IPN announced it would close for commercial reasons. For myself, without bulk billing, I would struggle to get to the doctor. I would put my children's health before I put my, my health. I hope it is the last fight in our area, um, that this will be a solution that will be not just a short-term one but a long-term solution that will provide for the health care uh, of our whole community. The clinic services 8,000 people living in Bridgewater as well as surrounding areas. Reading advocates gathered in Hobart this morning hoping to inspire more parents to read to their children regularly. The national campaign is much needed here in Tasmania with our literacy rates the lowest in the country. For two-year-old Liam, books are part of his everyday life. Liam loves reading so we probably do, you know, 10 minutes of reading before breakfast most days. And then we often read during nappy changes as well. The Children's Book Council is one of many joining the fight against Tasmania's 50% illiteracy rate. The group taking to Mother's Place, hoping to spike the number of parents choosing to read to their children every day. If we can create a culture locally, statewide and nationally, we hope to tackle that rate of illiteracy. Recent NAPLAN data shows one in three school students nationwide aren't meeting the minimum for literacy expectations, prompting some unanswered questions. How come after all the policies and programs that we put in place, we haven't improved? Reading aloud every day, the council's answer to the problem. A bandicoot digging a hole. The campaign is calling on schools, speech pathologists, writing groups and reading advocates to help spread the important message even further. If we can all sing from the same page, we think that, that message will resonate with the population. The healthy habit, also a bonding experience. I loved reading growing up and it's really nice seeing his language develop and learn all new words and vocabulary and learn about the world around him and I think books are a really good way of promoting that. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. Thousands of runners have laced on their running shoes with Australia's premier 10-kilometre road race back for another year. Competitors reaping the rewards of the gruelling Bernie 10, basking in all the glory of the iconic event. and racing into the 39th edition of the Bernie 10, the famed event back with a bang. We're really pleased to see uh, the Bernie 10 on the up, uh, returning full vigour. Near perfect race conditions for more than 2,300 competitors and the hundreds more spectators lining the streets. But 600 more runners that we had last year, they've all brought an extra spectator with them, the city's alive, it's fantastic. 
A field packed with a depth of experience from some of the country's most seasoned pros. The depth is really helped by the Tasmanian Championship, so we bring in a number of world-class athletes. To the next generation of track stars, giving us a taste of what's to come. I feel really good at the start, nice and pace, and then try to build up that last big hill at the end. Other tiny competitors had different ideas, opting to hitch a ride, taking in the iconic road race in style. Without the community, these events don't happen. There's no way the police would let us close the roads for half a dozen people to go and run 10k. While some enjoyed the fanfare, it was serious business for our Olympic hopefuls. Last year's winner, Jack Rayner, emerging from the pack early, leading the way up over the infamous final hill to be crowned a back-to-back -back Bernie champion. The winner for the 2023 State League 30 is Jack Rayner. Good to come back in uh, much better shape and yeah, perform well in one of the best road races in Australia. While it's third time's a charm for Sinead Diver, claiming her maiden Bernie women's crown. This year I was, you know, determined to try and get the win, not to be too bothered about time. Everyone walking away a winner, taking their celebrations to the streets. Victoria East 07, Tasmania News. The Newtown shopping precinct's facelift is finally complete. A street party was held this afternoon to celebrate the works with the hope the community will continue to use the area. If the community wants to have a, a weekly market or a monthly event, then this, uh, this area is a bit like a village square where they can uh, make those sort of things happen. It's the investment in infrastructure that we've seen here today with the upgrade of the new town precinct that makes it safer for vulnerable road users. All three levels of government contributed to the $1.5 million worth of upgrades. As you heard earlier, this year's Bernie 10 winners have been crowned, headlining a stellar 2023 field. Jack Rayner was able to hold off his competition to be crowned a back-to-back -back champion in a time of 29 minutes and three seconds. I was checking at every K marker where the other guys were, so I just wanted to kind of go as easy as I could the last few K and still run relatively fast. Meanwhile, it's a sweet success story for Sinead Diver after being pipped at the post twice. Proving third time's a charm, she finished in a time of 32 minutes and 48 well, seconds. I knew it was going to be a tough race for Caitlin. She's an awesome competitor. Um, so, yeah, I'm really relieved to get the win. Sam Clifford was the first Tasmanian over the line. The heartbreak continues for the Jack Jumpers going down to the Brisbane Bullets by just three points in the final NBL Round 5 game. The sides meeting for the first time in 11 months before they face each other again next week. A troubling start for the Jackies at Nissan Arena. The Bullets' Mitch Norton putting three points on the board just two minutes in. The first back to Mitch Norton. Knocks it down. Milton Doyle supplying the Jackies' first goal just minutes after. Oh, nice work from Harrison to stay in front. Doyle good enough to find an answer. The score 24-21 at quarter time, following a neck-and-neck -neck battle for early points. The second quarter proving much of the same. The Bullets putting up a consistent fight. But the Jackies stayed close behind. Sean McDonald helping put points on the board alongside Milton Doyle and Majok Deng. Oh, Juk Deng is having some sort of half. That's now 13 points. The Bullets leading by six at halftime. The third quarter saw Brizzy almost sneak away from Tazzy's grip. Jordan Crawford putting up a fight. When this little fella goes by one, it goes by two, and it's a relatively easy one for him. Not enough to get them in front. The Bullets holding on to a seven-point lead by the end of quarter three. Guard Sam McDaniel, one of many making life difficult for the Jackies during the final seven minutes, followed by DJ Mitchell. DJ Mitchell! Majuk Deng and Jordan Crawford securing a three-point difference with just four seconds to go. The Jackies' efforts not enough, going down to the Bullets by just three points, 87 to 90. Stolen away by Tasmania, oh, Crawford to tie it up! Oh. Misses and the Bullets hang on! The battle of North versus South continues next Saturday for the Indigenous round. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. 
The Tigers have pulled off an incredible come-from-behind win in their Sheffield Shield match against Queensland at Blunston Arena. Chasing 432 runs, the victory was buoyed by a Matthew Wade century and half centuries from Charlie Wackham and Bo Webster in their second innings. A partnership of Bradley Hope and Jared Freeman getting Tasmania over the line, with Freeman smashing a six to win the match with just eight balls to spare. Good evening, 20 in Hobart today, Launceston 17, 16 about Devonport and Burnie, 16 in Lowhead, Grove 18 and 17 in Flinders Island. On the close-up, areas of cloud are seen about the west and mostly clear skies to the east of the state. Further out, patchy low-level cloud is seen over eastern Queensland and New South Wales. Tomorrow, a cold front is crossing Tasmania during the morning, followed by a trough in the evening. Northwesterly winds tomorrow, 15 to 25 knots, swells up to 5 metres in the west and south and up to 2 metres in the north. A gale warning is current for the south, west coast and central west coast and a strong wind warning for the west coast, central north, Bank Strait, Franklin Sound, Flinders Island and the east coast. Tomorrow's forecast now Hobart, a shower or two, Dover 16, showers in Ouse. In the north, showers and 17 in Launceston, 16 in Devonport, Scottsdale 14. Burnie tomorrow 15, showers in Strawn, Stanley 16. St Helens and Swansea expecting showers and 19, 17 in Ross. Looking ahead to the three-day forecast now, Tuesday showers about the west and south. Wednesday fine apart from light showers about the west with possible morning frost. And Thursday light showers about the west extending to the south in the evening. Capital cities 24 and sunny in Perth tomorrow, a shower or two in Adelaide and 33 in Sydney. And currently Hobart 15 and cloudy, Launceston 13 and Devonport 13 and mostly cloudy. That's all in weather tonight, Lou. And that's all your news for now. Thank you for joining us. Kim, we'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy your evening. Good night.